ceremony, but is required by Article Six of the Constitution. Uh, the form of it isn't specified in the Constitution, and indeed the, the very first piece of legislation enacted by the uh, new Congress when it met was to establish a form of oath. The oath you will hear today is not that one. It was uh, changed. The present oath is not quite that venerable. It's only about a century and a quarter old. It was uh, uh, enacted in its present form in 1862, several months before the Battle of Antietam. Uh, that's venerable enough, I would think. Madam Ambassador, are you ready to take the oath? I am. Place your left hand on the Bible. Raise your right hand. <laughs> <laughs> I, Faith Ryan Whittlesey. I, Faith Ryan Whittlesey. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I, t without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. That I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Ambassador, you have faithfully, forthrightly, and articulately represented the policies of our administration to over 500 groups across America for which, and to which you were responsible. And Faith, when the history of the political alignment is now taking place across America is written, there will be a special chapter on public liaison, and yes, a special bouquet to Faith Whittleson. You never stopped working, you never stopped striving, you never stopped scrapping to help us build a new Republican majority. You reached out to every segment of America to build our coalition, to blue collar and ethnic voters, to blacks, Hispanics, young people, the youth, and yuppies, and the elders. <laughs> Union member, the veterans, business, every conceivable religious affiliation. And you didn't just speak to them about one issue that might have concerned them, you covered the waterfront, from spending and taxes to the sanctity of human life, and especially to defense of freedom and democracy here in our own hemisphere. And you, you will talk, uh, take with you a wealth and a depth of experience uh, to your new post as ambassador to Switzerland, and the United States will be superbly represented to the oldest continuous democracy in Europe, to the country that is the scene of so many important eff efforts at peace and democracy, we must send the best, and we are. Faith, sometimes people lose sight of just how much others give up, <coughs> how much we, their lives are overturned, and how much they must endure to serve here as you have served. Sometimes serving the public causes creates a great deal of personal pain, but you never complained. And I think I know how much you did, how much you gave, and I know that you are a person of great dignity and great determination. We'll always remember you here and be resting comfortably with you there, knowing what you're doing, and God bless you. Switzerland, then as assistant to the president, and now again as ambassador to Switzerland. I can think of no greater honor than to represent the country I love in the country which I have come to love. I'm so grateful for these opportunities because for me, as for millions of others, your two electoral landslides 
represented more than a temporary political route. They were a sign of a rejuvenated America, an America confident once again of its values, of its meaning, and of its freedom. We saw in you and continue to see in you a leader with the moral vision to see the right and also a man with the energy, the courage, and the unflagging good cheer to convince others of the right despite what seemed to be insurmountable obstacles. Mr. President, you have spoken of my outreach to groups across the United States. It would not have been possible for us to reach those groups had you not showed the way, you interest group. 230 Americans especially interested in freedom. I would like to express appreciation to my family, to my children, to my mother and my father, and my brother Tom and his wife Joan and their boys, and my sister-in-law Mary Whittlesey Hogue, her husband Jim, and their three children, and my niece Sandy, and also to the Ambassador of Switzerland who is here, Ambassador Jacoby and Mrs. Jacoby. I would also like to publicly thank my predecessor, Elizabeth Dole, for her uh, cooperation and assistance, and also extend best wishes to my successor, the extremely talented Linda Chavez. <coughs> Judge Scalia, many thanks for being with us today, and to all of you who have come to join with me and my family in this very special celebration. Many thanks for your kindness and your friendship, and I look forward to happy days with all of you. And I neglected to thank the Vice President also for taking time from his schedule to be with us. Thank you all kindly.